Hi guys, Merry Christmas. It's Christmas time and I know a lot of you are going to be going out partying, resulting in a lot of you getting new partners or kissing new people. And some of you are already kissing people with bad breath and not nice teeth. I do not want you to go out there, kiss someone, and the next thing they're telling everyone in the morning that you were tasting like the cabbage that you had last Christmas. And because Tenjiwe cares, I want to make sure that you guys, especially your children, do not grow up and have the same problems that we have. Like myself, I have a lot of missing teeth, which could have been avoided if I had been taught. I would like to change the shape of my teeth. I do not know whether to do it, whether or not to do it, because my dentist is refusing. Because what I wanted was to take them all out and then just buy a new pair. And I, may, I believe in false teeth personally. Because you can take it out when it's time and then put it back on. So, because Tenji Wake is, I'm going to make sure that this Christmas, this festive season, your teeth are on point. You're going to have nice, clean teeth. You're going to have good breath. Because some of you, the problem in the villa. Because it doesn't matter. Anything else can be good, but ha. Huh? And we must stop this thing of buying hair, but forgetting to buy uh, toothbrushes. And this year, I want to encourage you, when you buy your Christmas clothes or you buy Christmas clothes for your children, also remember to buy them a new toothbrush. Because there's one thing we do, but nobody ever thinks, let me change my toothbrush. So I've got my friend Angel, dental hygienist from the UK. She's here with me. She's going to be explaining how to take care of your oral hygiene. This is my friend Angel. Angel is a dental hygienist and uh, please explain to us what a dental hygienist does. So a dental hygienist, um, we clean teeth, we teach you how to clean it properly, we take care of all the little things dentists don't do, like your bad breath and staining and whitening. So we just make sure that everything is nice and healthy. Okay, so how do we make sure that this festive season we are not out there kissing people and tasting beans that they had two weeks ago. The problem is people do not floss. Flossing is flossing is the biggest cause of bad breath because all this meat, all these fries people are having and it's all getting stuck underneath their gums and they're not cleaning out so it's rotting inside their gums. And that's one of the main causes of So what, what do I use to floss? If, if I can't afford the floss that you buy, from the shops, is there anything from home? Like, can I uh, take a piece from a, a, a plastic bag or my shoelaces? First of all, guys, floss is not expensive. But if you want to, if you want to an alternative, I don't really. I, I feel like I shouldn't recommend this. But if you really can't afford it, maybe some string, you know. But you, the important part of flossing is you have to go inside the gum. But I think we should just go and buy the floss, the real, the real thing, because. If you can afford the meat that's now stuck, I definitely would recommend the real floss. Like, it, it wouldn't be safe for your gums to be using anything, anything else. To be honest. You saw me brushing my teeth, and you told me I did it wrong. Mm -hmm. Guys, I was so embarrassed and so shocked. <laughs> I was today years old when I found out that all my life I've been doing it wrong. So, Angel, we explain because maybe you've also been doing it wrong. Okay, so normally when people brush their teeth, they rinse it with water afterwards. You're not supposed to rinse. That's what I've been doing all my life. Brush, brush, brush. Yeah, it's not, it's not a thing. It's never been a thing. Toothpaste is designed to stay in your mouth. Your, your teeth need to absorb all the fluoride. So you're washing away all the goodness of these expensive toothpastes you're buying. You might as well just use water if you're going to do that. So you wash, 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 and just wipe. And just, just spit. You brush it and spit. That's all you do. In the beginning, it's hard to get used to it. After a while, it's like second. And how, how long are we supposed to brush for? You're supposed to brush for two minutes. So it works out four seconds per tooth. Okay. You start from one corner of your mouth and you work your way around. Because people do this. It can't be two minutes in Cape Town then. Uh, no, Cape Town probably 45 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and also... Uh, for, for, for children, at what age are they supposed to start brushing their as teeth? As soon as they have teeth. As soon as they have teeth, they So need those to brush. who are born with teeth must start the day they are born. The day they are born. Even if you go. Well, seriously, my friend gave birth to a baby boy with two. 
Yeah, but those ba those teeth are quite like soft teeth. It's not um, it doesn't count like in our but you have to brush anything that can attract plaque needs to be brushed. And also, because I'm, I'm asking about children, because I have noticed, especially with the, the black people with the new money, your children have some ugly teeth. Your children have rotten teeth. Because how you spoil your children is you buy them sweets, they drink milk before bed, they eating all the stuff that they shouldn't really be eating, but because it's expensive and it's sold at Woolworths, you think it's good for them. So how do you advise those parents? How to? This, how is, to... this is actually a, a really important thing because it's, it's all about when you're eating it. Mm -hmm. So when you, when you eat anything with sugar, your mouth has an acid attack and it takes about an hour for your mouth to go back to normal. So you need to have all your sugars in one go so you have one acid attack. Because even if you have a bag of sweets and you eat the whole bag of sweets in one go, it's better, than, it's better to eat in one go than having one every hour because your mouth is constantly going through this acid attack where um, the, all the, your, your enamel is weak because it's kind of being attacked by all the acid. It needs time to rest, so you need to keep your snacks to meal times. So if you have children, make sure you give them their breakfast and all their snacks, their lunch and all their snacks together. Because when you give them in between their meals, that's why children have decay. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, not, it's okay to have it, but you can't have it all during the day, you have to you have to make sure it's in moderation. And uh, how many times are we supposed to brush a day? Twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. Yeah. Okay. And can we share toothbrushes? You cannot share toothbrush. Um, gum disease. But we kiss people. We kiss strangers sometimes, guys. This is also this is actually proven that gum disease is contagious through germs in your mouth. So kissing, you can actually get gum disease from kissing someone with gum disease. Um, and gum disease is very easily, people that don't floss usually have gum disease anyway, but they probably just have it really mild. So um, yeah, we don't, we don't share toothbrushes, it's not a thing. Not even with your husband, not even with your... We don't, no, it's not a thing. It's, it's like sharing a face cloth, you know? Like, and then so someone's washing down there, and you go wash your face with the other thing. You know, it doesn't go together. No sharing toothbrushes. We don't share. We don't share. And how long are we supposed to keep our toothbrushes for? Um, three months. When your toothbrush starts looking like this, it needs to be changed. Every three months is recommended your toothbrush. To be and how do we take care of the toothbrush? You just make sure you rinse it. So it doesn't. It's not a lot you brush, and because you're going to be you're going to be flossing, you don't need. You're not going to have all this other stuff in your toothbrush because you already got rid of it. So the toothbrush is just there to brush, and then you rinse out the tap. And you leave it, you can have get a little toothbrush cap to keep it low so it's safe from dust or whatever, but it doesn't matter as long as you change it every three months. And mouthwashes, number one, are they good for us? Uh, do we go for the ones with alcohol or non-alcohol? And also, do we choose the ones with flavours? Can you just advise us on that? I'm actually, I actually did a mouthwash, mouthwash um, a vlog a couple of days ago. Mouth, okay, do you want the truth, truth? True, truth. Mouthwash is not that important. Mouthwash has a little bit of fluoride in. Mouthwash is just there to freshen things up. It doesn't fix gum disease. It doesn't do anything unless it's a special antibacterial one that's recommended by a dentist. So um, it needs to be used like lunchtime or when you're on the go, when you're in a hurry and you didn't get to brush your teeth before you go out. That's what mouthwash is designed to do. So people think, oh, I use mouthwash, I don't need to brush. Mm -hmm. No, because that's like throwing water on a car. And expecting it to be clean but you're not going in and mm. doing the manual work so mouthwash is not that important but if you want to use it use it lunchtime or maybe in the evening if you have bad breath mouthwash, mouthwash is not going to fix bad breath where does bad breath come from because some people it, it you can feel like it comes from deep inside not just the yeah, oral area that's, that's actually true if you have any stomach problems if you have uh, internal problems it can come through your mouth some people um have because but most 90% of the time, it's just because people are not cleaning their teeth properly. They're not flossing. Um, but it can, it, can, it can come from inside. Sometimes it's you. people have um, internal sores and stuff in their mouth, but most of the time it's because they're not doing it properly. Uh, but it can't be um, it can't be cured by using mouthwash. Mouth it just takes, takes, takes it away for about 20 minutes and then it comes back. And what do we do if we cannot afford, because uh, we do have, people who cannot afford toothpaste, who cannot aff afford a toothbrush, who cannot afford a mouthwash. 
what do you do at home? What uh, can you use that's already there at home? To be honest, you can you can brush it out without toothpaste. Toothpaste only the uh, the benefit of toothpaste is the fluoride. Mm -hmm. So you just won't be getting fluoride. But if you really don't have a tooth, um, toothpaste, you can actually brush without it because you're 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 trying to remove the plaque. You're just disrupting the plaque. Mm -hmm. The plaque. What, if you think of the science of it, plaque starts off as normal plaque and then it becomes bad plaque. That's why you brush twice a day. So you're trying to, to stop the plaque from becoming bad plaque. It works the cycle, so you're breaking the cycle. So if you're breaking the cycle of the toothbrush, you can't. You don't have to use toothpaste. The toothpaste obviously aids because it has fluoride. It's got many taste. It's got it, it um, forms a paste, but. Alternative, there's no like real alternatives because we don't want to give people alternatives. Because uh, what about what about charcoal? Okay. This is my, of course, you don't want to give people alternatives because you are in the business of selling toothbrushes. And I don't sell. I don't. I don't get profit. So I don't, just, I'm not from from uh, evidence point of view. There's not enough evidence that other things are good enough. So I don't want to. How about charcoal? Charcoal has not been around long enough for us to have enough evidence but it has like i know like in the countryside when we grew up do you know why charcoal is good charcoal. Do, 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 the, the reason why charcoal is effective is because it's abrasive it's rough and it's abrasive but abrasive is not good for your enamel because it's it's rough and it's you're brushing already but now like, everywhere i go there's a, 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 a charcoal toothpaste and it's expensive so we buy it i am not a charcoal okay. manufacturer <laughs> Okay, I cannot comment. I've got a few more questions for you. My next question is, how do we avoid morning breath? And how do you tell your partner when he wants to kiss you in the morning and he has dead morning breath? Okay, there's, there's no way to avoid morning breath, unfortunately. Your morning breath will probably just be a little bit less if your oral hygiene is good. Mm -hmm. But you can't avoid it because your, your, your mouth works really hard in the night. Just get used to your mouth open. The saliva can't move around, can't because the saliva actually cleans your mouth. It's the it's the the natural cleaner of your mouth. So when your mouth's open and stuff, your, your mouth gets dry. You can't avoid that. Yeah. When it comes to morning breath, personally, I just I don't do morning breath. I don't do kissing in the morning. It's that's a personal choice, I would say, with morning breath. So you need to evaluate the person you're with. Maybe test it out if you're, if you're into that. So. But what, can, what can we do to minimize it, to make sure it's not as bad? And also, what, 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 do, what, do, what do we tell them? That, uh -uh. If we could kill morning oh. breath, then I would be a very rich person. There's, there's no way to avoid morning breath. You need to make sure you're brushing at night before you go to bed and flossing your teeth. It, you're minimizing it, but you can't avoid it. It's just one of those things. It's just one of those things. You just have to, it's a personal choice about how you want to deal with the kissing. That is, mm. that's, not, that's not my problem. I don't deal with that in the surgery. <laughs> and, uh, anything else that you can recommend that we can use to help us? Um, Sugar-free chewing gum, it's really good. It pr produces saliva in your mouth. So if, so if the saliva is flowing, you're, uh, the chances of you having dry mouth, which causes bad breath, um, and yeah, it's chewing, sugar-free chewing gum. So the ones with sugar is enough? Yeah. So about sugar though, because you're just adding another acid to your mouth. Sugar free chewing gum is, is highly recommended, especially when you suffer from dry mouth. And what about the flavors? Um, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what okay, as long as it's sugar free. Yes, so that's definitely something you can do to kind of. And can we share out. chewing gum? We can't share chewing gum. Who wants to share chewing gum? People do. Hey, it's 2018. <laughs> it's 2018. Like, no sharing of chewing gum. And that, that's also spreading a lot of bacteria we don't need. Toothpicks. Oh, toothpicks. Toothpicks are not good. They're good for picking the food out. That's why it's a toothpick, not a tooth floss. It's not there to clean your because teeth. Because we, what well, we understand is, is tooth pick. So pick. Then no, a toothpick is literally there if you have a bit of food stuck in your teeth. Mm -hmm. Like that's when you're supposed to pick it out with a toothpick. People people get, they like the feeling of the pain mm. and they start stabbing their gums and it's literally, your cut, your gum is already a soft tissue. It's already wet and fragile and you're going in there and stabbing it with a, with, with a mechanical object. Like it's not recommended to use toothpicks to clean. You have to, toothpicks are there to pick food out. And uh, what about people who use things like grass? Because <sighs> it, it's natural. 
can't do, be better. Do, we, do they use grass as like a daily basis or is the grass just if it's there they pick it? What, how, does it what, how does the grass thing work? Do they have grass in the bathroom? Like I don't know. I've never been to their bathroom, <laughs> but I see them. Like you need to you need to use what's designed for your teeth. And one question that really bothers me. I'm not saying you, 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 you must give me a professional medical opinion because yeah. you are not a medical doctor. Yeah. Kissing people with bleeding uh, teeth, how do you tell your partner you don't want to kiss them? Okay, first of all, if your gums are bleeding, you have gum disease. Bleeding is a sign that something is wrong and that there may or is gum disease there. So I wouldn't be kissing any. Firstly, for me, anyone I'm dating, they are their routine gets changed very quickly. So, um, yeah, if someone's gums are bleeding, it's usually because they have gum disease, so you should get that fixed. It takes two to three weeks for the bleeding to stop if you're flossing properly. So there's no excuse for bleeding gums. It's not something that takes years to fix. It's literally less than a month you can fix your, your gums from bleeding. The reason it's bleeding is just because it's irritated by all the, the stuff that's on your gum. It just wants to be cleaned. That's all it is. Toothless people. Mm. Do they still need to brush? Yes, you need to brush your gum. Your gum is still a living organism. You need to brush your gums. Even if you have gaps where you don't have teeth, you need to brush the gum there because the plaque sticks to it. You even have to go to the dental appointments every six months because you can still get oral cancer. You can still get. You can still have problems just because your teeth are not there. Your gums are still alive. And uh, people with false teeth. People with false teeth need to take them out at night. People, but how's your bae going to think of you if you're taking them out at night? Well, how's your bae going to feel when you get a fungal infection? Because that's what happens. You need to remember, it's like my lecturer used to say, keeping your teeth in at night is like having a shower with your socks on. Your mouth is not designed to have all these objects inside. So, first of all, the, the germs and the bacteria gets underneath it. So it irritates your gum because your gum is designed to be free. And if you do have missing teeth, maybe from an accident, maybe from gum disease, what's the best way to replace them? What's the best way you would recommend? It depends on the person. It needs to be appropriate for the person. So depending on how much bone is left, you can get an implant, you can get a denture, you can get a false teeth, um, you can get a bridge. There's so many options. There's no excuse. I think we need to do a separate video on that alone. There's, there's no excuse for you to people, people to have missing teeth these days, no excuse. Because we can afford to buy hair, we can afford to buy bags about the teeth. And we can afford to buy alcohol. And also, do you just um, replace them only if they are front? Should we also be thinking of replacing our teeth that are missing, but nobody sees that are like you, bad? It depends on. It also depends on the person. But if you if you have a tooth above, so you have a missing tooth at the bottom, and you have a tooth above. If there's no tooth at the bottom, that tooth can actually come out slowly over the years and you'll have one long tooth at the back because there's nothing for the other tooth to kind of bite on but it depends if, it, if you're if it, your mouth is still functioning mm. you should be able to get away with it as long as your mouth you can chew you can eat and do what you need to do it's not that important it's um but it's obviously recommended and then if if uh, say my grandmother or my baby doesn't have teeth or my friend or my partner because anyone can be without teeth. Mm -hmm. They they love meat, but because they have no teeth, can I chew for them and then feed them? And that's also a personal um, decision. If you, <laughs> whoever wants second hand chewed meat, that's the person you need to ask. Because we kiss them. Because yeah, but the, the the juice of the meat, you know, you need to taste the seasoning. You know, we all take you take the best gonna, part. I'm not gonna chew and swallow. I'm just gonna chew. So yeah, but you're taking all, you're taking all the best part of the meat. I'm not though. I'm just chewing. You see the seasoning and the you know the marinade. You're, that's the one you. So you're basically just taking the taste for them. Giving but them. at least they're still getting some meat. Well, then that's their problem because if I, if I was them, I'd get false teeth. Too. Or they can just cut it up very small. They can literally cut it up like a baby. How you'd feed a baby. So yeah, but with the false teeth, make sure you take them out at night. Put them in water, like with a bit of, um, I don't know what they use in South Africa, but you, something that's sterile. Put it in water and brush it. Clean it like you would clean your own teeth. That's the best way to avoid getting an infection. Uh, you know, sometimes we do things with our mouths. Yeah. That are done at night usually mm. to entertain our people. Okay. 
is that safe for our teeth? Um, as far as I know, there has been no accidents when <laughs> teeth. <laughs> I'm not talking from a past experience, this is uh, from a medical point of view. There's no evidence to show that um, doing certain acts at night. Happens. But can you get S uh, like STDs? 100%. Orally. 100%. 100%. You can, you can get chlamydia from, from um, doing acts. So if we're going to go down, we need to find out what's there. Yeah, you can. You can it's a fluid. That's how people, that's a fluid. And if you have a cut in your mouth, you can even end up getting... Uh, worse diseases. So, definitely, any sexual act, you need to make sure that the person that you're doing it with um, is clean. But yeah, it, 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 oh, there's no condom. no teeth has, has been harmed in <laughs> uh, that that I'm aware of. So, when you, when you have oral sex, it's safer to use a condom. Um, I'm not a sexual health um, expert, so I can't comment on that. I'm going to get a sexual <laughs> health expert. Actually, I'm going to do a video with someone on this. I know the right person. I know the perfect person for it. And, well, how do you, like if you have a friend that has a very bad, very, very bad breath, uh, how do you address the issue? How do you tell them? I, I come across this so much, especially family members. Mm. I, 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 I normally ask them if they see my videos and, I, and then I let them watch it. Because ninety nine percent of the time they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, and so it's for those who want to see your videos, where do they find them? Um, my YouTube channel is called Dental Chronicle. I show you how to floss in the camera with my own teeth. Show you how to brush. We talk about spitting and not rinsing. Um, and we're going to be talk my new video is going to be about mouth mouthwash is coming out soon as well. So yeah, um, watch my videos, guys, to avoid bad breath. <laughs> 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 Tenji Wick cares. I care about your teeth. I care about how this smells. Me too. Merry Christmas. <laughs>